But no, my childhood was, it was good, it was just, you know, a slightly rougher area than some people grew up in. And, you know, I'm not as, I wasn't as buff as I am now. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> so, so I would deal with these things by just humour, trying to be funny, make people laugh, make the hard lads laugh. And sometimes it backfired, like a mate of mine, in fairness, he had an abnormally large head and I, no, I took it as my responsibility to point that out to him uh, and in my foolishness of youth, I did this many a times and one day, I was walking home from school and I had a basketball in my hand, I put it next to my head and shouted to him, who's this? So he chased me, and I thought, we're all having a laugh with mates, you know, just a bit of banter. And he chases me, and I stop running, because I think, oh, well, we're having a laugh, <laughs> he's going to catch me and reprimand me. But what he decided to do was headbutt me. He used the biggest, heaviest, most least lethal fucking weapon. To reprimand me. Slightly ironic, I guess. <laughs> I think we get on now. The fact that I just still tell that story about him having a large head, I'm sure he probably doesn't like, but hey, it's life. Right. I was in Los Angeles and I decided just to do this often, Mike. Uh, people had told me I should do comedy. You know, I'd been doing acting for a bit and I was just kind of tired. I wanted to be a bit more creative in the sense of I wanted to create my own words and ideas and have people respond to them as opposed to some, my portrayal of somebody else's. So I went to this open mic and what it was, is it was set up with the first hour was comedians and the second hour was musicians. But I was the only comedian that showed up. So I ended up playing at the start of the musicians hour and I played to an audience of five nervous musicians that had no intention to see any comedy that evening. And I had this brilliant idea of there's this girl that I was quite attracted to, that was a friend of mine that I liked, that I wanted to impress. So I thought, I'll invite her to this open mic, what could go wrong? This girl that I wanted to impress, I invited her to this open mic to come see me perform. And she came, much to my bewilderment, I didn't think she was going to. And I did this five minute bit I just don't even remember it. It was about this fucking penguin riding on the back of a lettuce. It was bizarre, surreal shit that, you know, I still kind of like, but it was like that I did my concept album first. You know, that's not necessarily the type of comedy I do. Really, it just seemed an easier way of telling a story, and if people didn't like it, I could sort of pass it off. It's just an abstract idea. Not everyone's going to get it. I still do a bit of that in my act today, but anyway, she came along to this, so I got five nervous musicians, a girl I'm fucking beside with, and me talking about squirrels. <laughs> and I bombed. She laughed, and but in fairness, it was terrible. I should have quit then. But there was something about it that I fell in love with immediately. Oh, and... And... Invite, inviting the girl was the worst possible outcome. As it worked. <laughs> A month later we were fucking living together. 
two months we was engaged, and a year and a half down the line, I've got new 15 minutes of material. That's all I got to show for that shit. <laughs> yeah, it worked a charm. Fucking brilliant. So, yeah, my first gig fucked up my life in more ways than one. I've done a lot of weird gigs, you know, in pubs and uh, clubs, theatres, coffee shops, not on the street. I did a gig on the street to passers-by and sold some drawings that I'd done. Uh, yeah, in Santa Monica. I just, I tried it. I had a lot of street uh, performer friends. And I thought, I'll give it a go with my comedy, I'll take my surreal shit out there. And I really appealed to the, uh, under the influence sort of homeless guys of the street. Uh, which wasn't really a, a big income for me, selling drawings. But I gave, I gave some drawings away of characters I'd created and uh, with little quotes on them and you know, this guy was fucking loving it. He was tripping out on some shit, and he was just, he just kept coming up to me. He was there for about a fucking hour listening to me. I just wanted to do something different. But another one was, I mean, I've just done a gig in London where I ended up riding one of the audience members. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of fun, but there was this one in Hollywood that I did. There was a table of people. And it was a brilliant table of people. And I don't know if they came to see me or if they just came into this establishment for a drink or whatever the fuck they did. But they stayed for the whole set. And it was like the fucking United Nations around one table. It was brilliant. Everyone looked like they're from somewhere else and they didn't go together in any sort of friendship group and they didn't actually talk or communicate to each other all night. And there was this one guy, a slightly larger, heavy set geezer, that just sat with his head on the table and a beach towel over his head. For the entire set, I did a fucking 60 minute set. This geezer in the fucking front row with a beach towel on his head. I didn't, I didn't draw attention to it, no. I normally do, but I'd, I'd been told off for uh, giving the audience a bit of a hard time that, uh, the week prior to that. So, so I, I let him off. <laughs> but I, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. Travelling is great. The amount of places I've got to see and go to and great but also the audience the audience has got to be my favorite thing you know a geezer I was, I was in a phone shop and I hear Stephen Evans I said yeah he said, oh. and he said to his friend this guy's a fucking awesome comedian I saw him last night it's like oh shit you know that doesn't happen all the time I'm not a celebrity you know <laughs> but that's it's nice to see someone that remembers me enough to talk about me, to stop me in the street. You know, it's rare as that happens, but it has happened. And that's just that's an amazing feeling to know you've left an impression on someone. It's scary, really. I, you know, someone came up to me after a, after a, I don't know where I was. I think I was in London. She was, uh, this European girl came up to me and said, oh, I've seen you before. And I, I worry about you. <laughs> that wasn't the best moment of my life, but I thought, you know, at least she cares enough to worry. It's nice to see people laughing, see people smiling, and get that validation that I'm doing something good that people are enjoying.